Hi, my name is Joe and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Hawk Ridge Systems and today we're going to be taking a look at some tips and tricks for SolidWorks inspection. In the past you may have seen one of our other videos on inspection and uh, one of the things that we can do is create these balloon drawings and I've got this one here in front of us and at this stage we could either print this out and hand it off to our QA inspector or we could gather together a team of people and divvy up the work. Now one of the things that uh, we can do in SolidWorks inspection that helps us with divvying up that work is by adding a grid to our drawing here so that we can actually say, hey, John, you take zones A through, you know, through C or you take uh, you know numbers or rows 5 through 9. Whatever it happens to be, we can divvy up the work and we can assign it based off of the grid itself. So let's take a look on how we create one of these inside of SolidWorks inspection. If we come up here to the top, if we're on the drawing tab, you'll see that in the middle here is there's this grid section. And if we go ahead and click it on, we see we get this pane that opens up here on the left hand side and it gives us the general grid properties. Now first of all, let's take a look at the two basic options that we can do. First we can choose to create a grid that covers the entire sheet from corner to corner or we can switch it to, to go ahead and create a grid of a selected region. So if we only wanted to pick out the stuff that was in the drawing itself and not in the title block or anything else, um, we could go ahead and make the grid region encompass only that particular space. And you can see how I can adjust that using the toggles in the corners and on the edges. Let's say we wanted to do the whole page, but this is divvying it up into way too many squares. So let's go ahead and reduce that number. We can come down here, we can say, you know what, we only want three rows and we really want three columns, not six. That brings it down to a more manageable grid system here, and we could divide this up amongst three people easily if we had to. Now you're not restricted to using just the rows and column settings that I have here. For example, you could go ahead and change uh, these settings in here. For example, the colors, if we wanted the grid colors, green maybe is not our thing, we wanna go ahead and apply a red grid that maybe is a little bit easier to see. And maybe the numbers in the corners here, they don't stand out enough. We don't wanna have blue. Instead, we'll go ahead and call out this sharp pink color perhaps. And if we wanted to go ahead and toggle the visibility, we could turn them on and off. And then down here in the rows and columns sections, we can also exclude specific things. Um, we can specify labels that we don't want to include. Um, we can also come in here and change the way that these are formatted. So you can see here there are options for one through nine going from top to bottom or going nine to one from top to bottom, also A to Z and Z to A. So we can switch that for either ones. So right now I have it a mixture of numbers and letters, but if we wanted to, we could actually switch it up, say A to Z going that way and nine to one going the opposite direction that way. And now we can see how we've changed the way these numbers are looking. Once we're happy with the particular settings we want, we can go ahead and say OK, and it's going to apply the grid here to our drawing. And when it does that, you'll notice that this new column down here gets filled out. This is the character zone column, which goes ahead and lets us know where the particular characteristics in our table appear inside of the grid. So that when we go ahead and export this report to our Excel report, it already lists where this balloon appears on the drawing, making the job much easier for that inspector to go ahead and find the dimension, know exactly where on the part he needs to go ahead and measure that, and then go ahead and write it inside of the report. This also makes it easy for us to sort of filter and organize these by zone so that if we wanted to say hand off all of the B's, even though there's a lot more work there, to one guy, perhaps we don't like him, and then the A and the C to somebody else, then that's perfectly acceptable. So that would be the uh, way to go ahead and add a grid to a drawing inside of SolidWorks Inspection. If you like this tips and tricks video and you'd like to see more like it, check out our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.